Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at this 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter. This inverter is by XYZ Invit. So we're going to be taking a look at this inverter and we're going to check if it's a pure sine wave inverter or not. We're also going to mount it onto a board just to show you guys how you can mount it and use it in your scenario, whether it be RV, van, or camper trailer. So one of the things that comes with this inverter is a clear plastic tab here that goes over top of these terminals. Now, when you first purchase this, before you start playing around with anything, I'm going to recommend that you put this over top of the terminals just to protect yourself because once you hook a battery up and turn it on, these are going to be live contactors here. So you definitely want to have these protected right away. Uh, another thing that comes in with this particular model that I have is a remote control. So this is going to be a remote on off switch. So depending on where you have this mounted, if it's not easily accessible, you can turn the inverter on or off with this remote button, which is very handy to save on uh, power. We also have some 40 amp fuses. Another thing that comes with this inverter is we have two pair of black wire and two pair of red wire. Now these are 10 millimeter squared wire. So putting two of them together is gonna to be a 20 millimeter squared wire. And this is gonna to be to the equivalent of about a four gauge wire. Now a four gauge wire can do about 160 amps draw. Anything more than that, I would be putting a larger gauge wire into my system. So with 160 amps, you can run continuously, safely, I would say about 2000 watts. So you're not gonna be able to continuously draw the 2500 watts that this inverter are capable of. If that is something you're gonna to wanna to do with this inverter is a continuous discharge of over 2000 watts, I would suggest making your own cables at a two gauge size rather than using the four gauge size of the two wires. Um, we also got a user manual and this is just gonna give you a bunch of information on the inverter as well as it's gonna give you a diagram on how to wire up your batteries in parallel. So let's get started by hooking this up and then we will do some tests and see if it's a pure sine wave inverter as well as we'll just run some things and see how it performs. And we'll do a test on the standby consumption as well. Now, if we take a look at the back of this inverter, um, we have a couple of voltmeters here, as well as our on off, and we have two 15 amp plugins. Now over here is the terminal block. This is what is gonna allow you to do the 2500 watt of discharge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up this power bar and we are going to be able to power everything through this terminal block on this power bar. Now this power bar does have a 15 amp breaker built in, so I'm gonna be protected on this side. If you are wiring this up in your RV or trailer, you may want to use some sort of a load center or some sort of panel in order to control the amount of power for the gauge wire that you're gonna be using. Okay, so if I remove this terminal block cover, now you can see you're gonna to wanna to wire this part up before you actually mount your inverter because you have to get the wires up into the bottom here and it's gonna be a little bit difficult if this is mounted on the wall or the floor or up underneath your cabinet. So you're gonna to wanna to take the inverter and flip it upside down. Now I'm gonna check that these wires here are all tight. And they all actually could use a little bit more of a tighten. So those are all tight. Now this black wire is going to be your load wire or line wire. This is going to be your ground wire. And then this is going to be your neutral wire. And we also have a ground wire connection here to chassis. So this you can hook up to chassis a vehicle. So pretty easy wire. I'm going to start with my ground wire first. Now I'm going to my neutral wire. And then last, I'm gonna do my line wire or live wire. Okay, so once these three wires are connected and they're good and secure, we are going to replace this protective cover. Okay, now let's mount that up on the board. Now for my mounting, I just have this board set up here temporarily. All I had done was just put two screws on here in order to mount the inverter securely. 
So now we have the inverter mounted and then I just have two more screws here in order to mount the power bar. Now the only thing left to do is secure this wire so that it can't be yanked out. And for that, I'm just gonna be using this simple clamp. We're just gonna wrap it around. And there we go. Now our wire is safely onto the board. Okay, so now we have our power bar hooked up. So next let's hook up a battery and then see if we can turn this on. Now for our battery, I'm gonna be using the SunFun Kits battery. This is a 300 amp hour battery. I'm gonna be using lithium iron phosphate. It is great for off-grid solar applications. Like I was saying earlier, with the wire gauge, about 160 amps is gonna get you about a 2000 watt draw. So you're gonna to want to at least have a 200 amp hour battery whether it be a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate or a 200 amp hour deep cycle battery, you're gonna to need to have two 100 amp hours in parallel in order to get 200 amps of discharge. And you will be able to do probably, if you were to discharge this at between 2000 and 2500 watts, you can do it for about an hour of a continuous discharge. So the biggest thing, I remember when I first started out, I would hook one of these big inverters up to a 100 amp hour battery and think that there was something wrong with the inverter, not getting the full discharge out of the inverter and getting the power that I was expecting. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna buy an inverter of this size, you need to have the battery to back it up. Okay, so let's hook up our connectors. So with this battery comes uh, a nut and then a flat washer and a split washer. Now, this nut is serrated, so I don't actually feel the need for a split washer, so I'm gonna do without for my install. So pretty simple, I'm gonna start at the inverter, and I'm gonna put my two wires. Okay, I have those two wires on. Now I'm gonna do the same with the negative. Okay, now I'm gonna connect uh, one of the terminals to the battery. So let's go with the positive first. Okay, now for my negative, because I'm using lithium iron phosphate, this inverter has capacitors inside that takes the power and evens out the flow. So with lithium iron phosphate, there is a very low resistance value in this chemistry. So it is gonna send a huge inrush current as soon as you connect to the inverter. So what I like to do is I have just a little resistor here. It's a 10 watt resistor. And I will actually use this and hold it onto the next terminal in order to charge the capacitors inside of the actual inverter. With lead acid, you don't really need to worry about it because there is a internal, and see there was no spark as well. Because there is an internal resistance in lead acid, you don't exactly need to worry about it. But with lithium, I would always recommend pre-charging the capacitors of the unit before you make your connection. Okay, so now I have my battery cables. Let's turn this on and see what happens. And here we go. Okay, you can hear the fans kicked on really high and now they've died down. You can see here we have our voltage of 13.2 volts. That's gonna be on the battery side. And then on the AC side, we have 123 volts. Now let's click on our power bar and the light has turned on, so this is now live. Okay, so just for playing around here, I've brought up the SunFun Kits app for the battery. We are currently drawing about 17.46 watts. So that's gonna be the standby consumption of the unit here. So that's actually pretty good, about 18 watts, somewhere around there which is about 1.2 amps. Not too bad for the standby consumption of the battery. 
but I thought it'd be kind of neat. I want to do a deep discharge. Let's see what we can do here. So currently right now, I'm discharging at about 111 amps. Now let's see, I might have to up my uh, amp draw on this battery in order to get this inverter to push itself. And I do a full review on this uh, SFK battery in another video that you can check out if you would like. Okay, I have it on 200 amps. So with this battery, I'll be able to discharge 200 amps. So let's put this up here. Let's stay right here so I can see it. Okay, so right now on the heat gun, I'm discharging at just Okay, so uh, let's see if I can't turn this on and off. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're back on. Okay, so let's discharge here. So now let's kick on the heat gun. We're gonna go to the first setting. about 16,000 watts. We're gonna go on the first heat setting again and that kicked this off before. So now we're at about 2,695 watts. This is gonna kick off again in a minute. Yeah. So 2,700 was the last reading I've seen on this. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I can't try and balance and get just under 2,500 watts. Oh, there we go. Coming back on. Okay, now I've got this heater on medium, which is pulling just under 1,000 watts. Okay, let's ramp this guy up a little bit. So I'm gonna go into setting number two. there you go. Okay, so we have 2,164 uh, watts going in right now. And the fans are off on this unit. So we have a thousand here and, and a thousand here roughly. So yeah, just over 2,000 watts. Now I'm going to let this run for a little while. I want to see these cables are starting to get a little warm. Okay, these wires are starting to get warm. We're about 2,000 watts just over, so. Yeah, they're, they're warm. They're not overly hot, so I wouldn't uh, continuously discharge over 2,000 watts without a larger gauged wire. So if you want to push 2,500 watts, I'd put a two gauge wire on onto this system. So next I'm gonna test the pure sine wave with this oscilloscope. So we're gonna put that in here. Okay, so we're looking like we have a pretty good pure sine wave. It says we have 124.8 volts at 60 hertz, which is perfect. Now let's test this under load. Okay, so let's turn on a load and see what happens. Just the fan. Put a higher load on it. Actually, let's just go full. So you can see there we still have a very good sine wave. So this is indeed a pure sine wave inverter, which is gonna be great for all your electronics. It's gonna be good for all your electronics, like if you have a TV or a laptop or anything that has sensitive equipment in it, it's gonna be great for using it for that case. So we actually have a pure sine wave inverter. Okay, now is this inverter for you? I think a 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter is perfect for an RV or camper if you have the battery to back it up. 
So this is a perfect example, this 3000 amp hour battery capable of doing 200 amps of discharge. I had no issue running this inverter. So if you have two batteries in parallel at 100 amp hour batteries at 12 volts, you'll be able to run this no problem. I think the amount of wattage is good. If you wanted to run an inductive cooktop inside your RV or camper, you will have the ability to do so for a limited amount of time, however many amp hours you have. But then you're going to have enough left over to keep running, let's say, your TV or charging your laptop or charging your phone or various other items inside of your RV or camper. So I think this is a great option. The price point is great. It's uh, on par with all the other inverters on the market at this size and of this quality. And the color scheme on here with the blue and the yellow is really nice. And this is uh, nicely coated, so it's going to last a long time. And another option with this inverter is the on-off remote switch, which I highly recommend for you. You can leave this by your door, and then when you're about to leave, you can turn it off. Because like I showed on the app, it's about 20 watts of discharge that this unit's going to use just idling, not using any power. So if you're on your way out to go do some shopping or out for a hike or something, be able to remotely turn this inverter off so you don't waste your battery is a very handy option to have. And as you can see, we have the inverter in the on position, on button, and off button. So it's pretty handy to have this remote. So this is the 12,500 watt inverter by XYZ INVT. I will leave links in the description below so you can check this guy out. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.